Okay, so one way to think about algorithms is a big, big, big topic is to divide it up into these techniques and study the techniques. The techniques along with the basic data structures and then the fancier data structures that I will talk about in detail lets you do complete solutions to problems. You can't do complete solutions to problems just by having somebody describe a vague method like I've been doing right up till now, anytime we've talked about an algorithm. Like, oh, you kind of do this and that. You got to talk about how you're going to do it. The implementation does count, and it's important. Some of the basic data structures work pretty well, but you can soup them up with fancier ones. We'll get to kind of a middle stage as far as the complexity of data structures go. The other way to divide algorithms up into topics is to talk about the different applications. <laughs> And that's what we started doing a few minutes ago. There's sorting and searching. Those are so fundamental, it's the first thing anybody thinks about. I've got a whole bunch of data stored. Somebody wants to search for something, change it, delete it, insert to it. That's searching. Sorting is you want to take that information and sort it up. That's one kind of application. What's another kind of application? Big, big style of algorithms we've been talking about. It's already come up a lot. Algorithms that are on graphs, graph algorithms. This is a really, really fundamental and important part of algorithms. A lot of things are represented by graphs. And the most famous algorithm of all, which nobody mentioned up till now, is, well, I thought it was. Maybe it's not. But the most famous one that I thought everybody kind of heard of is, is what? Oh, that's a version of this, the traveling salesman problem. But I was thinking more of the, the flip side of that, the easier part of that, which is the shortest path problem. You're given a map. You've got a map quest, right? You say, I'm going to Buffalo, New York. And you want to know the best route to get to Buffalo, New York. Well, it's a pretty simple kind of request. There's better be a way to do it. Otherwise, map quest isn't going to have much of a following. And there is a way to do it. And writing shortest path algorithms is one of the basic algorithms. And it's polynomial time solvable. The traveling salesman problem that Anthony mentioned is a famous, seemingly similar problem to that, but much, much, much harder, and it's NP-complete. And that problem asks, if you have a bunch of different cities like this, the shortest path problem says, hey, what's the fastest way of getting from here to here, assuming I know the distances you know, and the edges between all the cities? And they have weights on them. They tell me exactly the miles. Traveling salesman says, I want you to be able to go through all these cities exactly once. Visit every city. You're a salesman. You've got to do some work there. And come back to where you started. And I want you to do it using the minimum number of miles on your car. Right? That problem is NP complete. That problem is hard. And actually, you know, the hard part of that problem is not the shortest part of it. The hard part of that problem is just determining whether you can actually get through a graph. Let's say these are the roads. Can you get through this graph, starting from here, going through every node once, and get back to where you started? Well, in this case, the answer is clearly yes. That problem, remember what that problem's called? Anybody remember? Got a name. It's called the Hamiltonian circuit problem. This problem is NP complete. What if you try to solve this problem? What's the brute force method for solving this problem? Try each, try each path. What represents a path? An ordering of the nodes, right? How many ways are there to order n nodes? n factorial. Okay, you can choose the first one. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's six choices. The second one, there's five choices. Some of them don't make paths, right? So you're going to go through all these n factorials, see if they make paths. If they do, You'll say, I made it. And if they don't, you say, go to the next one. That's a horrible algorithm. That's the best one anybody knows. <coughs> Remember this problem, Euler circuit? How's that one different? Right, instead of going through every node once, you want to go through every edge exactly once. <coughs> Can you do that here? Can you start at a place, go through every edge exactly once, and end up back where you started? No, this you can't. This problem was solved by the mathematician Euler back in the 1700s, and it's a very, very easy problem to solve. Anybody remember how to solve it? You have to have an even number of odd edges. 
Yeah, very good. You, you look at what's called the degree of the node, and if they're all even, the answer is yes, you can do it. If two of them are odd, the answer is you can start at one and end at the other and get through all of them. And if you have more than, than two odd ones, if you have like four odd ones, then actually if you have four odd ones, you can do it with two paths. And if you have six odd ones, you can do it with three paths. And well, Euler circuit easy, Hamiltonian circuit hard. Shortest path, easy. Longest path, what's the longest path? It's what's the longest way to get through from one node to another. That problem's hard. You know why that problem's hard? It's because Hamiltonian circuit's hard. Mm -hmm. Hamiltonian circuit is basically saying, find if there's a path that gets through everything. That's kind of the longest path. The longest path is actually harder than Hamiltonian circuit. It's saying, give me the biggest you can get. You can't even figure out if you can get all of them, yes or no, much less the biggest. So if Hamiltonian circuit's hard, certainly longest path is hard. I should say something. You, you might be thinking to yourself, geez, well, why is shortest path so easy and longest path so hard? You should be thinking that. You should be thinking that in every one of these pairs of problems. Why is this easy? Why is this hard? That's the intuition I want you to develop. But I want you to at least get the right idea for shortest and longest path. The longest path problem is hard. The shortest path problem is easy. But if I give you a graph like this, <clears throat> with negative weight edges on it. This can represent a lot of different things. If you think it's just bizarre, it can represent all sorts of things. This, this three represents, you know, that, it, that, it, that uh, I don't know, there's a waterfall from here to here. So I get three units of electricity moving from here to here. But I have to push the water up a hill to go from here to here. There's lots of reasons why you might have negative weight edges on a graph. But let's say you do. And let's say in this graph, you want to find the shortest path from one place to another. If you have a negative weight cycle in a graph, then it's not even clear what a shortest path means. Right? You're not going to go round and round and round. That's not fair. So if I say, look, here's what a shortest path means in a graph that has a negative weight cycle. It means, what's the shortest path to go from here to here, but don't use any cycles? Just nice, normal path without cycles. The cycles aren't allowed. That problem is NP-complete. Okay, remember that. It's not that shortest path is just easy by nature. It's easy because there are no negative cycles that might mess you up or you have to avoid. If you have to consciously avoid the negative cycles, the problem is very hard, and there's no way to handle it. That's why longest path is hard. Because longest path and shortest path are just the same thing, right? I mean, if I went ahead and took a graph with only positive edges and asked you for the shortest path, that's the same as turning all the edges negative and asking you for the longest path. So if I give you all negative edges in a graph and say, what's the longest path? You can do that problem. Longest path is hard because normally we're talking about a graph with positive edges. So there's a positive cycle. And we have to not use those positive cycles. That's what makes it tough. So, so be careful not to think, OK, I got the intuition. Short is easy. Long is hard. Be careful. There's a lot of intuition to develop, and it takes time. All right, other examples. Uh, more graph examples. Somebody gives you a graph. They want to cut it into two pieces so that they go through the minimum weight edges, minimum number of edges. You can do that. That is part of a big fancy graph algorithm called maximum flow. We're not going to talk about this algorithm. It's very hard. Minimum cut, maximum flow, they're the same thing, and it's a hard algorithm. But you can do it in polynomial time. And as opposed to being linear, this one is typically n cubed. Not an obvious algorithm at all. What are we trying to do here? You're trying to take a graph, cut it into two disjoint parts, and minimize the number of edges in between those two parts. Okay. And it has to do with the same thing of how much flow can you push through these edges. The minimum cut is the same as the maximum flow.